money than what um, Brandy was offering. And Otzi just said, look, you come over here, um, this is on the table for you. And Brandy basically just said, look, the Morris boys are coming through. This is what we can offer because we don't want to, um, you know, we think they're going to be phenomenal players, which they are. <laughs> they're probably way better, way better players than, than what I ever was. Or, you know, so Mick said, come over and I... I actually had a deal with Huddersfield, to tell you the truth, ready to go, yeah, um, which was for more money too. But I just I had a really good link with Mick um, and I want to go to a place where um, Gauz was going to, Aaron Guerrero. Um, and there's a lot of Aussies. Stacey Jones was there, Adam Moore, Casey Maguire, et cetera. Um, so when I heard that, I'm like, look, there's a big influx of Aussies there. It's in the south of France. We're going to build build a team there and um, best decision I've ever made for sure without a doubt I mean it's, it's a bit of a weird irony as well because obviously Nathan Brown went over to Huddersfield in, in the end as well so you, you might have linked up back with him once again mate it looks like you've got our notes because I've got Casey Maguire Adam Mogg Stacey Jones and Jason Croker came over with you as well I think um, it was yeah 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 good, Toots, good Toots is a really good friend of mine he, I catch up with him all the time Jace Croker and yeah oh look there's there was a lot of good players, man. Like Pelo, Dimitri was a phenomenal. Um, There's there a lot of good players that first year, and I think um, it was in that building phase, and they needed not only to get success, but they needed a good bunch of humans. Like, you know, you can get some really good players, but if they don't gel, not only on the field and off the field, and especially in France, man, you've got a it's a big cultural shock for sure. Like you pick up the language or you don't fit in like it's that simple and um some of the guys did and some of the guys didn't and you know obviously I stayed there six years so I picked it up really quick and there were some guys you know um Scotty Juro in Henderson um Louis who else was um Murph there's a lot of guys that that just adapted it really um really quickly and took it on board and tried to fit in and yeah. But that 2007 season, man, like obviously we went to Wembley and played Challenge Cup and um, it was a phenomenal first season. If you want to, you know, write a first season for a coach and for a team to get to, to Wembley, especially, you know, that win against Wigan was pretty phenomenal um, against Baz, um, which was nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, we, we deserve to get there, and I don't think a lot of people gave us the opportunity to not the opportunity. Didn't didn't yeah didn't think that we could get there, and we did. And even though we didn't get the win, it was just a it was a great journey that year. And um, I'm very proud of a lot of the young Frenchies that come through and and had a crack as well. Do you get much Challenge Cup in Australia? Do you know how much you know how prestigious it is, and, and how much of a big event it is? Not really, man. Well, like I come back and talk about it, and. Some of my friends who are really big league fans, um, they're just like, oh, we only really watched it because you were playing, you know. <laughs> but then you've got your diehard league fans that know every player and it's just like that. I think, um, I mean, you get a little bit of the NRL when you're over in Super League for sure. Like, But here it's not televised. So what's free to air is is um, usually what everyone consumes, that sort of media. So... Yeah, but look, it's. I think it's a it's a great opportunity for for clubs that um, I think back in the day they had some clubs that weren't even in the Super League or before that I'm not sure exactly what it was called. I'm not sure, but they were like the Lee um, Swinton. I don't know the smaller clubs like still had an opportunity to 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 go ahead and um, and get to Wembley. Was it always at Wembley where? didn't always get played there or yeah I think from like the 1920s it was at Wembley then when it got redone in the early noughties it went to like Twickenham and Murrayfield and Millennium Stadium but yeah it's pretty much always been there yeah yeah man that was whew, an experience I know that's probably your next question but man that was we played we played all year and we lost a lot of um, players I think coming into that we lost Casey we lost goals early in the year we lost Dimitri we lost Toma and there was sort of myself, myself, Moggy, and um, a couple of the older players that were trying to be the glue. And 
I think it took the toll on us a little bit towards that game. Like I said, because uh, I get along really well with with Potsy, and I said, man, I'm a bit burnt out. I said, I know Moggy is. We've played every game this year. I said, we need to have a rest beforehand. I said, the the, the normal season doesn't mean anything because we can't make the the finals. So rest us. And but his mentality isn't which. Every coach has their own ideas, and that's why, I'm, you know, when he said, you're playing, I just followed him because I believed him, you know. But he said, I want to go in with a good attitude and a good win. I think the game beforehand, we got done by Warrington, maybe. I think if my memory serves me okay. I think I got sent off too, and I wasn't probably not in the best headspace or, or feeling fantastic either going into that that game. And But I can't take anything away from St. Helens, man. Like, Sean Long... Pricey, bloody, who else was there? Roby, man, um, Wellens, like, uh, they're phenomenal athletes and, and players and, you know, they did better than us. They were way better than us. So, it probably could have been, you know, the score could have been a little bit closer if Toots try got allowed, but, you know, end of the day, is what it is. Yeah. I mean, like you said, St. Ellen's had an unbelievable squad in that period, mate. So, it's, it's no mean feat. So, you, mean, you got to Wembley, 84,000 there as well, mate. But you yourself that year, you got into the Super League dream team. Is, is mm. personal accolades like that, do they mean much to you or is it just part and parcel of, of playing? Um, I think uh, it was 2008 bro, when oh, I got, <laughs> yeah, the next year. But um, the first year, the big building year for myself, and I think just finding where I, I fitted in within the team in that in 2008. Um, Stacey left and Toma come on board as the, the leader in half and him and I just connected really well like it was I know that's old saying like when you get a half and a fullback that knows what each other are thinking a little bit because we played so much when I say play I mean play like muck around like yeah. kid style like kick the ball and you know play stupid games at, at training and I think when it gets on the field, it just becomes that second nature. It's like you've got that feeling, you've got that intuition, you've got that essence between you. And he definitely made me look good with his kicks. Man, man he was phenomenal. Some of the stuff he used to do, these banana kicks and stuff, and pull it out from anywhere. And, you know, I'd just get on the end of it and score and racked up a few tries that year. And um, we obviously had a pretty good year. We got beaten by... Wigan at home, but that was an, another another season where I sort of I said to Potsy, look, because I played 70 games straight. I didn't, didn't get injured for 70 games. And I said to him, I said, man, I need a break. Like, he's like, no, no, you, you know, you're going so good. Like, and I'm not taking anything away from Potsy's coach. And like, that's not the point. It's just, I think um, if myself and a few of the other key players could have got a little bit of, breathing room, I think that may have been a different story, but you know, it's in the past. You look back and it was a good experience. So. Yeah, like yeah. you said, mate, 08 and 09 were a lot better in the league, finished third and eighth, and you got you got one game away from the uh, the grand final at one point. Um, I mean, I think that experience at St. George and a bit later on, obviously, at, at Catalan, do you think that experience, you, you felt like you were more of a, a, a veteran in that squad now? Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Like, um, when you play, like I said, 70 games straight, you get your timing, you get your um, durability and, you know, some little things that you don't, um, you probably don't develop when you're in and out. And if you break an arm or you do, do have an injury, it's like you have that time out and then you've got to try and come back in, not only to get your timing, but you've also got to come back in and, fit in with the team, you know, you're not training with them all the time, you, you know, and then you've got the mental stuff that goes on and, you know, like, oh, you're doubting yourself and all that sort of thing. So I think, um, you know, like when you do have a lot of games um, on the field and then I think it was 2009, I may have got my first injury. 2010, I broke my leg. I remember that. That wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> and 2011, did my elbow. So, like, I think... A lot of players, like even listening to Adrian Morley speak the other day, is like when you're going really good, and I think he broke his arm. It's like it, it definitely puts a halt on on everything, and then you've got to try and 
get all your confidence back, get all your timing back, get um, get everything back and ready to go. And it's um, it's definitely a, a, a huge, huge thing for the players. And like I said, I'm, when you're playing 70 games straight, you have that opportunity to get that the connections and stuff with other players as well. Yeah. I mean, back in the 2009, mate, you, you found yourself playing for France in the Four Nations. That Obviously, really tough competition with England, Australia and New Zealand being in there as well. But how did that come about? So, I think, um, well, uh, Justin Murphy and um, Jared Taylor, uh, James Wynn, there's a few guys that I was friends with in France that had played uh, the Aussies, but played for France and they didn't, you didn't need a, a passport. Um, I inquired about getting one for sure because I was thinking about staying there for a lot longer than six years. But they said if you've been there three years, you become a, um, I forget the name of it, but I think it's like an academy player or something like that. So you don't have to have a passport. So we played, um, I remember the game in Paris against the Aussies. That was definitely one of the highlights of, of my career, like Wembley for sure. And, you know, the, the big games at Saints and, um, and that, but yeah, it was good. Like, got to see what sort of calibre the Aussies were, and they weren't even playing probably their best team. Um, you know, we were way, way underdone going into that, but um, really good experience. We had a lot of young blokes. I think, um, was Theo there? No, he was there the next time I played, but young Theo, he's, he's a fantastic footballer. He's playing for St. Helens, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he was there the next time, but Guys like him, um, even in 2009, have gone on to do some fantastic things. And um, it's that experience, being around older players um, like myself and, and other experienced players that we can learn off. And obviously the, the competition, like not every day you get to play the Aussies, you know. So, um, and got to swap the jersey with, um, with Gids um, after the game, which was cool, the number one jersey. So definitely... You know, in, in Paris too. So I was I hadn't played in Paris, so it was nice. It's phenomenal, actually. When when you're going into them type of games, um, I, I think about the World Cup and things like that. And, you, and you're a lower league nation, and you're going up against your Australia, New Zealand. What are you What are you actually going into the game to think? Is it because realistically, you, you you're never going to going to win the game? Are, do you know that going into it? Is that your mentality, or is it just that we'll go in, just give it all you've got? Don't matter about the scoring. What are you thinking as as a team going into them type of games? It's a good question, dude, and it's and it's one that um, I don't think anyone will understand until they're in that position because you, you sleep in the night before knowing that you're going to get bashed the next day and. You know, it's like you want to go in the best intentions that you're going to win, but you know, you you obviously think that it's it's going to be a really hard slog to do it. And the the Kiwi game, I didn't play in, but I watched the boys, and it was a tough physical game. And I remember even going into the Aussie one as well. I was like, you know, if there's a possibility for you to have to a good start, and some of the young blokes can can stay aggressive and stay enthusiastic, then. We might be in it for 50 minutes. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's it's an intri- interesting question, man, because – and I don't think – it's a hard one to answer because you you definitely know that you're probably going to get hiding with some, with some games, but you've got to go in there 100%, otherwise you'll get hurt. That's that's the thing. So Definitely. Yeah. I, I think the, the emergence of, like, Tonga nowadays and obviously they beat Australia, I think today it was, like – the other day, it was like two or three years since Scotland drew 18 all with New Zealand. So it does show that it, it can be done. It is a rare occasion that it can be done. Going into 2010, um, it's roller coaster a couple of seasons following that, to be honest. Um, it was the wooden spoon in 2010 for you boys. But improvement in 2011, finishing sixth and then fourth in 2012. But never really progressing up, uh, um, past the first stage of the playoffs. Um, wh- why do you think that it never really got to kick on when it got to the final series? Yeah, look, man, 2009 was an interesting year. I'm just bringing it back to that only because um, Kevy was our coach for 2009, 2010. And we, we, had, um, we had Mick Potter who had a, just a different way of doing things. And then you get another coach who's also bought his, his strength and conditioning um, in Steve Hooper. And we were getting flogged, like flogged. And it just... The, the French mentality, man, as well, like they, they work hard, um, but they also 
don't want to get spoke to like little children. 